All right, how I built my gasifier. This is going to be uh, video number seven, I believe. Uh, this is my generator. It's a FW1000 uh, Kawasaki generator. I think it's rated at like a thousand peak watts, 750, you know, normal watts. Um, and it's a tiny little engine. I want to say it's about a three horse or so, not very big. Um, had a few questions of how do, how do you connect the gasifier to your generator? What modifications do you have to make to your generator? Well, you're looking at it. This is the only modification I have made to my generator at all. What I've done is, this is a, a male cam lock fitting. If you looked at my, my earlier video about my plumbing, why I put that on there. Does it have to be? No. You know, you could put a, a screw-in hose barb in here if you wanted to, and, uh, and that would work fine. Your hose could be permanently attached to it, whatever. I just wanted it removable in case I wanted to go from generator to chipper to whatever. Um, so, this is the, obviously, the carburetor. This is the uh, air filter housing, and all I did was I cut a hole big enough for this to fit in and sealed it with a couple of O-rings on each side. And these were breather holes. Um, this is uh, obviously not a very technical part of my gasifier here, but I just took a, t a couple chunks of uh, duct tape and plugged those holes up so that it's only oxygen that it can receive is from my own ball valve. This is the only modification that I have made to my generator. Um, you know, I've heard some people talk about having to advance timing and things like that. Um, I absolutely did not have to do that. This is a completely stock generator. I haven't cracked it open. I haven't messed with it. The, the single one and only modification I made was just to get my wood gas into the filter housing. Um, it's funny, I bought this generator used, and when I opened this filter housing up, there wasn't a filter element inside there. So this particular generator, I do not have a filter element inside there. Um, you know, you'll have to experiment. If your generator or motor does have a filter element, well, try running it with that element in there. Try running it without it, you know. Um, again, that's, I, I can't offer you any experience other than mine, and mine is not in there. So uh, that's it. No other modifications to it. Um, just a little old, right here is where the fuel tank used to mount. This is the, uh, the fuel line. I just stuck a bolt in the end and put a hose clamp on it. Um, but I wanted to, for video's sake, leave this, leave the gas tank off of it so people can see that yes, it is running. No, there is no gasoline in it, you know, and things like that. One nice thing about this generator, and of course this is not like a, you know, this isn't a permanent deal. This isn't something that you would run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, this, this little guy is strictly for emergencies. Um, I plan on getting a, a much larger portable generator, um, something that I can run quite a bit more. Uh, obviously, my goal is not to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, ideally, you know, in the event that I absolutely had to run it, you know, in, a, in power failure or something, I would probably run it a couple hours, two to three hours a day, two to three times a week. Um, the nice thing about this generator is it has a 12 volt charge plug. So if you had, you know, a battery bank or something that you were charging, um, on top of running your 120, you could also, you know, charge 12 volt batteries off of that. Uh, so that's kind of a neat feature. Um, not all of them have it, but a good portion of generators do. So, that's all I've done. That's the only thing I've done to this generator. The only modifications at all is just put this male cam lock in here. Um, and again, it, it doesn't have to be there. I mean, if you had your hose permanently connected by whatever means you choose, uh, that would work absolutely fine. The only reason I did it again is so that I can move my plumbing setup. I, could, I only had to build one carburetor or ball valves, but the only reason I did that was so I could move it from, you know, generator to chipper to whatever it may be just by simply pulling the cams off and swapping it around or the cam lock off. So there it is. This should be my final video, of course, unless anybody has any requests or questions or 
or things I may have failed to mention. I'm sure there are several of them. Uh, so please rate and comment. Feel free to ask questions, and if I know the answer or think I know the answer, I'll give you my best guess. Again, I, I definitely don't know it all. You know, uh, I, I only know what I did and whether or not it worked for me.